Okay. I'm glad there's not other back here. Oh, here, you can wear this. You might get a little dirty. But... <laughs> All right, guys and girls. So a couple of you had asked for a few questions on pages 33, 34. Yes? Yeah. But I already forgot what they were, and I'm sorry. Number 11? All right. Take a look at number 11. Um, I'm going to change the variable to x. Is that okay? Because my, my a's look like twos sometimes. So I'll change it to an x. I just want a piece of weight to O C. O C. All right. What? There's a jet heavy up. Don't give a shit. That's all right. Uh, what does it appear maybe we should do first on this problem? Yeah. We could minus 11 from both sides first, absolutely. What's another thing we could do just to get rid of the denominator? Yeah, we could multiply all three terms by 3 over 1. Good. Love it. So, if I multiply... You're absolutely right, too. I was just trying to stay consistent, yeah. okay? Uh, so that becomes negative 2x uh, plus, what does this become? 33. 33, right, because it's 3 over 1, so it's 3 times 11. And then what does this one become? 9, good. Yay? Good so far? Hey, does our sign need to flip over yet? No. So it doesn't flip over because even though I multiply everything by a term, it, did, it wasn't negative. All right, so then I'll subtract 33 from either side. Again, we're going to treat the inequality sign like equals. Okay? So that will cancel, cancel. So you get negative 2x is less than negative 24. Okay. Now, quick question. Does it appear that my sign will flip over? And if, if so, why? Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, I'm dividing by a negative 2. So remember whatever you're dividing by or multiplying by, it has to have to be negative. Oh, I, made a, I just made a boo boo. So we change the sign, right? And then x is greater than 12. And then what does it also say on this problem? It says solve the inequalities, write all. In interval notation. Is this interval notation right here? No. no, the interval notation was with the square brackets and the parentheses. So am I starting at negative infinity and going to 12, or am I going from 12 to infinity? 12 to infinity, good. Is it a square bracket or a rounded bracket at 12? Uh, here. No, rounded. Rounded because I don't have the equal. And then at infinity, is it square or rounded? Rounded, and the reason it's rounded, so this is your interval notation, okay? And the reason why it's always rounded at infinity is you can never get there, so it's a limit you're approaching. Okay? What other questions might you have come across on the homework? Yes? Uh, 18, 18, go on the back side. The number of students in a classroom cannot exceed 31, okay? Number 18. The number of students in the classroom cannot exceed 31. So can I get have more than 31 people in the class? No. no. Can I have 31? Yes. Okay, so it's going to be a square bracket. Um, can I have negative infinity students in my class? No. Could I have zero? Yes. Yeah. You know, there, there could be a time where somebody didn't sign up, and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, hey, Mr. Sturb, you don't have any kids in your class, so I guess you don't teach them. I, th I think it's going to be a square bracket as well because, yeah, so that will take place. And a lot of times in, uh, my wife teaches college, so she sees her roster right away. So it'll say, you know, chemistry 151 or chemistry 248 or whatever the section number she's teaching. And when she first shows up on the, the, the they, she, there's a roster sheet that electronically comes up on her thing, and she'll say to me, Okay, registration hasn't opened yet, so there's no kids in my class. And she'll, you know, oh, look, there's no kids. And she has one class that actually has 75 kids in it. So it's a pretty good class. There's one that has 75, one that has 60, and then 
The two black uh, She's at CU Denver. So I think she's trained down to the light rail. I think it's called just she won't get to the light rail down. Have to deal with traffic. It's good stuff. Um, th hang on. Is this one done? Um, define whether the variable or define a variable. Um, I don't know. Class one. I don't know. Can you do that here? Write inequality and interval notation where that. To model each of the following. State whether it's discrete or continuous. What do you think? Discrete. Why is it discrete? Yeah, it doesn't go to infinity. So it doesn't have to be No. We're gonna get to a point where we can't have any more in here. Yeah. We would stack them stack as high as we can, but Uh, the two at CU Denver is called N, uh, Chemistry for Engineers, and then she teaches at Arapahoe Community College. She teaches um, two science courses. One is Chemistry and Physics, and one is Astronomy and Biology. So the classes she has at Arapahoe Community College are like this size. There's not that many kids. As her classroom. At CU Denver, I thought it was pretty cool. So she's, you know, we'll teach you like this type of thing. So she has a projector on the front wall, both side walls, and the back walls. And they're all just, you know, kids are spacing every which way. That's a heck of a lot bigger classroom than this are. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, go ahead. Nineteen. All right, let's take a look at nineteen. Number nineteen, it says there are fewer than 170 days of school left. There are fewer. 170 days of school left. Okay. So there are fewer than that, so it's got to be a rounded bracket. Could there be zero days of school left as well? Yeah, <laughs> that's you know, that's a great day for y'all, but but I'll miss y'all. Yeah, so there's less than 170 days and a square bracket on the on the zero. So don't get me wrong, I, I enjoy my time off during the summers, but I gotta tell you, I I have like a week off, and then after that I'm like, I totally miss you guys. So, I, you know, it's not like when it gets to the end of the year, it's like, I can't wait to be away from y'all. But I, uh, I miss you guys, and I'm like, yeah, I, you guys are doing great. Other questions on the homework? Yeah. Uh, number uh, 10. Dan. Number 10, it's a good one. This is one that students had struggled with in uh, yesterday, or on the test, this type of operation. Okay? So what do you think? I have 2 fifths m is greater than 10. So go ahead. What do you think? Make it 5 on the math test. Just find the number. Like, uh, math test. Multiply each other by 5? Yeah, yeah I, I'll do that. I think that's fine. So that's going to be 2m. Does my sign flip? No. No? And then what's the last thing? Divide by two. Does the sign flip? Nope. So I have that. And then our interval notation. Am I coming from negative infinity going to 25 or I'm going from 25 to infinity? 25 to infinity. Round brackets or square? Round. Round. Why is it round here on the 25? There's not the, it's not the equal sign. We don't have, there's not an equal sign right here. Okay. Are there any other questions from the homework? Life good? Yep. Go ahead. Uh, for the pipe to stay safe, a house should stay at or above 50 degrees. Okay. Um, for the pipe to stay safe, the house needs to be at 50 degrees. And so at or above. So at would mean it has to be 50 or above. Is it? Is the temperature of the house going to get to infinity? No. No. So I guess it could. I mean, other problems might take place then. I'd say that to warmest day. I know that's that's not official, but I mean, just use a little creativity when you're thinking about this, like. Could it really go to infinity? No. I mean, if we got to an infinite temperature, I'll tell you what, uh, we wouldn't be looking the same. There, we wouldn't be a vapor. So let's just say if there was a problem of ovens, like ovens, ovens, like, uh, they cannot, 
speed of this 500. Uh -huh. So um, we just want to uh, top bottom. Top jump, top yeah. bottom temperature. Yep, yep, absolutely. I think that's fine. Anything else? Are we okay? Let's go once, twice. So. All right, if you would, make sure your names are on those and pass those forward. If you're passing other things forward, that's fine as well. Just make sure your name's on anything you pass forward, please. Get done? Cool. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you were absent. So I'm going to Anybody else have anything I need? And also coming back out to you is last time's homework. So grab yours and pass on the rest. Here, we'll start over here this time. Try and mix it up. Confuse you guys. We have some notes for today. Let's see what we do with these. Today's my sister's birthday. She keeps on calling me. Happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we've already kind of started with this, but let's uh, let's start with some warm up. Uh, first problem: Should I go ahead and combine five and two together, or should I distribute two, or should I distribute negative two? Three No, you distribute two. Two or negative two. Yeah, make sure the negative two goes to both. So watch the signs. That's a positive force, and that's a negative eight. Is that okay? So I got to tell you, there's a lot of you that this is a one-point error. You don't just make sure you distribute the negative to both of those. See how the signs change? Please make note however you need to, so you don't have to stop making that mistake. Combine like terms, so five minus eight is negative three, right? Yeah. Seven add three. So negative two x is equal to ten. Divide your side by negative two. So x is equal to negative five. Uh, second problem, we want to clear the denominator. There's four terms. Would it be logical to multiply all four terms by to get all the denominators by by? What did I do? Oh, thank you. What should I multiply all four terms by to get rid of the denominators? Yep. Six. Six. So we'll go six over one here, six over one here. All right, uh, six times half is three, and the x comes down, plus comes down. Uh, third of six is two. Uh, six over one and six, those cancel out, so I get one plus six x. Um, let's see, let's maybe subtract six x from both sides. Negative three x plus two equals one. Subtract two. Negative three x equals negative three. Ooh, I'm dividing by a negative. So do I switch the equal sign? No, still say it's equal. Even though the negative is positive. Is that okay? I like it. We good? Okay. Can I move to the next slide? Yes. 
see what this is all about. Oops. All right. So solve for the following and give the graph and the answer and write it in interval notation. So problem number one, what does it appear I should do to both sides of the inequality sign? Yeah. Add five. Almost. I mean, add five. Add five. So if we add five to both sides, I'm going to wind up with x is greater than 15. Agree? Yes. Does the sign flip over? Or does it stay the same? It stays the same. I only added. I added 5, so that's what I do. So if we graph this, am I starting from 15 and going to infinity, or am I going from in negative infinity to 15? I want values that are bigger than 15, right? Is it open dot at 15 or closed? Open. open. And am I going to infinity or negative infinity? Infinity. So it looks like that. So if we make our interval notation, it is going from 15. Is it a rounded bracket or a square bracket? Rounded because we don't include it. We're going to infinity. So again, that's the interval notation. Okay. Uh, problem number two, what does it appear I should do to both sides to get x all by itself? Yeah, divide each side by 2. Does the sign flip if I divide by 2? No. 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 Okay. So divide each side by 2, so our sign stays the same, so x is less than 2. Okay, on a number line, you'd have 0, you'd have 2. Is it an open dot at 2 or a closed dot at 2? Open dot. Am I shading to the right or to the left? Yeah. To the left. I want values less than 2, so I'm going to what value then? Negative infinity. So when I write it in interval notation, I read it left to right. So where did I come from? Negative infinity, rounded bracket. Where am I going to go to? Two, rounded or square? There's not an equal sign, so it's got to be rounded. Problem number three, I have 2x plus 8 is less than 4. First step would be add, subtract 8. Subtract 8 from both sides, so I'm going to get to this. Hey, that turned negative now, so should my sign flip over? No, it turned negative because I subtracted 8 from 4. So that became negative. What's my next step to get my x all by itself? Divide both sides by 2. Does my sign flip over? No. Okay? Does everyone understand why it doesn't flip over? It's a negative answer, yes, but we didn't multiply or divide by a negative. All right, so if I graph this, is it a solid circle or an open circle at negative 2? Solid because it's equal. Am I getting values? Do I want to shade to the left or to the right? X is less than negative 2, so things that are less than negative 2 are like negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 100, negative a billion. So it's going to the left. So where's this heading to? Negative infinity. All right, so how do I write my interval notation? Where did I come from? Read it left to right. Where did I come from? <coughs> Didn't I? And I'm going to what? Oh, it's a negative 2. Is it square bracket at negative 2 or rounded? Square, square because I have a solid dot. I have an equal sign, so it's a square bracket. You feeling all right? May I move to the next slide? Delta jump on. Now, going a little bit tougher. Okay, so problem number four. I think it's good that we have the variable on the left side. So remember yesterday I gave you three scenarios when your sign could switch. One of them was if you multiply by a negative number to get x alone. Another is if you divide by a negative number to get x alone. And what was the third scenario? What was the third scenario? It had nothing to do with mathematics as far as multiplying or dividing. 
if I flip-flop the entire equation, if I put everything on the left on the right, and put everything on the right on the left, okay? So I'm going to just change what this looks like. I'm going to go this. My sign is going to flip this way. Okay, I did not multiply or divide by a negative, did I? I just took what was on the left side, put it on the right side, took what was on the right side, put it on the left side. And then I flipped it over. Get that? So now I'm going to solve it. So what do you add? Add three to both sides. So I'm going to get this. Get the nine. Uh, and then let's write it in interval notation. So am I going from negative infinity up to nine, or am I going from nine to infinity? Nine to infinity. Is it a square bracket or a rounded bracket at nine? Square. Why is it square? There's an equal, so it's going from 9 to infinity. Again, that's my interval notation right there. Okay? Problem number five, where do you think I should start? Yeah, I will flip. Whatever's on the right side goes to the left side. What's on the left side goes to the right side. What also has to take place? The sign needs to flip over, right? Okay? So I'm just going to rewrite it. Sign changes direction. Did I multiply or divide by a negative for that to take place? No, I just flip-flopped it. What would be my next step? Subtract what? 18. Subtract 18 from both sides. If I subtract 18, I get to negative 6. Hey, that became negative, so should I flip my sign? No. Last step is? Divide by what? 2. Divide both sides by 2. So I get negative 6 over 2, negative 6 over 2, bless you, is what? 3. Okay? So I want values that are less than negative 3. So what's less than negative 3? Like negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, or is it 2, 3, 4, infinity. 5, 6? Yeah, infinity. what infinity? Negative. negative infinity, good. Okay? So I'm coming from where on this problem? Negative infinity, and I'm going up to what? Negative 3. Is it a round or square bracket? Careful. It's rounded. Why? Because there's no equal. Yeah, I don't have an equal sign right there. So that's why it's rounded. Okay? Feel all right? Yeah, baby. May I move to the next slide? Am I going too fast for anybody? Tristan's sleeping. I'll try and hold it down. I had a young lady fell asleep one time during class. She started snoring, and I'm not talking like the little. It was like, it was like, what's that? <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's think about this one. We should be able to do this. What should I do to both sides to get x all by itself? Do I need to flip it? No, I already have the x on the correct side. So how would divide, divide by, by what? Negative nine. negative 9. If I'm divided by negative 9, what's going to take place here? The sign is going to switch. Is that right? Everyone good? If you multiply or divide by a negative number, you need to switch the direction of the inequality sign. So that's how that would be. If I wanted to write this, I want values that are larger than negative 2, so that would be like negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So I have a rounded bracket at negative 2, and it goes to infinity. <coughs> you feel all right? All right, let's talk through number six. What should I do to both sides on number six to get the answer? Divide by negative four. If I divide it by negative four, anything special going to happen? The sign is going to flip over. So if I divide each side by four, I would wind up with y is less than or equal to negative four, because 16 over negative four is negative four. What values are less than negative four? 
Negative infinity, good. So where would this be coming from? Going to? Square around it. Square, why is that? There's, a de there's not a negative, but there is the equal sign. That little sign right there says, hey, make that square. Okay, it means you need to include that one. Uh, problem number seven, what seems obvious to start that out? Distribute, distribute what? Negative two. Negative two. So by me distributing negative two here and here, I get negative two x plus six plus one. It's still greater than 11. Yeah, but mister, you said if I, if I multiply by negative, I change the sign. Only when I'm solving for the variable. If I'm distributing over, I'm not moving anything over there, am I? So the sign still stays as is. Okay, combine like terms. So do you agree with this? This. No. What's my last step? Negative by negative two. What's going to happen now? The sign is indeed going to flip to the opposite direction. Four over negative two is. So I want values that are smaller than negative two. What values are smaller than negative two? Negative, negative infinity. infinity. So where are we coming from on this problem? Negative infinity going up to square rounded. Rounded does not have an equal sign. All right. It appears I have, let's see, I have one term, two terms, three terms, four terms. Agree? Agree. The denominators are seven and three. What's the smallest number that both seven and three have in common? 21. So what should I multiply all four terms by to get my denominators to go away? All right, 7 goes into 21 three times, so I get 3x. Minus comes along for the ride. 3 goes into 21 seven times. 7 times 2x is 14x. Set, uh, minus sign comes on. 7 goes into 21 three times, so I get negative 3. Sign stays as is. 7 goes into 21 three times, so what does this become? times 10, isn't it? 30, right? Combine like terms. I'm going to add 3 to both sides, so that this becomes 33. Oh, I made a mistake. You want to see it? Yeah, what's this supposed to be? Yeah, 11. I, I didn't combine those together. That should be an 11, negative 11. Okay, what's my last step? Divide by negative 11. Divide both sides by negative 11. What's going to happen? Sign needs to flip over. And 33 over negative 11 is negative 3. Where am I starting from? The negative infinity. I want values that are bigger than negative 3. Negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to start at negative 3, square bracket, because there's an equal sign, and go into infinity. Okay. So ladies and gents, page 35, 36, you can get a start on that. Got a little bit of time left, don't we? 10 minutes? Sweet.